Today we're talking about a kick butt woman, an all powerful gauntlet, and a 90s art that has quite a bit of TNA. So the question is, is this too much? Or is this just a great example of a 90s comic? Hello everyone and welcome back to Married with Comics. I am your host Laura and as many of you know we are doing a 500 subscriber giveaway. If you don't know the story behind this giveaway please make sure to check out our last video talking about the incredible Ken Lashley. Now in order to qualify for this giveaway and more you have to be commenting on videos, subscribed, liking videos. The more you're participating the faster we're growing so we really really appreciate your time and as our thank you, we have some incredible giveaways coming very, very soon. So stay tuned. More details are coming. Now, today, the series that we're talking about is Witchblade. So Witchblade was released by Top Cow Productions, or basically they're an offshoot of Image Comics. Now, the founder, owner, and author of Witchblade is Mark Silvestri. This series was first released back in November of 1995, which was pretty much at, you know, the height of a lot of our bodacious females and TNA. So the big thing I wanted to answer today was whether this was just a little bit too much. Now, before we get into the good stuff, I actually have to talk about the journey that I went through just to get the book. So I have been looking for this for years except because it was released back in the 90s and there haven't been a ton of reprints it's been pretty hard to find the original trade paperbacks and getting all the single issues forget about it so they started doing reprints sadly i missed the kickstarter i missed all the releases of volume one just terrible timing on my part I did catch volume two being released on Kickstarter. So I reached out to the company through Kickstarter and I was like, hey, I'd love to add some extra money on top of this and just buy both volumes in one. This is July of 2020. Didn't hear a word. Contacted them again through Kickstarter. Nothing. I tried the website, Top Cow. Did you know the email address on their website is invalid? I tried eBay, I tried Facebook, I could not find the hardcover edition of volume one of Witchblade for the life of me until about a month or two ago, I finally had someone from Kickstarter respond definitely late. And they said, listen, I don't know if we have any hardcover copies of volume one that are left. I do have an email address though of someone who will know. They gave me the email address. I contacted them and thank the Lord they responded. So I was able to get a copy of volume one, hardcover edition, but not only that edition, the one that I'd actually been secretly looking for, which was the Top Cow exclusive cover. Now, this is the regular cover that I've been showing you. And let's say it's not bad, but this one just looks so cool. Look at that. Just, I love that cover. And even better, on the back, I love that stained glass window kind of image. And yes, perfect example of the TNA that we are going to be talking about. Just for an FYI, regardless of which cover you get for the hardcover, the spine is always the same. So I had my book and then I delved into the storyline. So the story is you have Sarah Pizzini, who is a detective with the police force. And she is a bit more gung-ho than your average female. She's very attractive, but she's always kind of taken her job very, very seriously. Her sister, on the other hand, is a model and is willing to use those good looks to her benefit, whereas Sarah, on the other hand, is willing to get her hands dirty and get the job done. So we start the story with her going undercover to this event, and she's trying to kind of catch the bad guys, and we meet two of our other main characters, at least for the beginning of the storyline. So we have Mr. Irons, who is this billionaire. So picture Bruce Wayne, who on the public side of his personality is, you know, the philanthropist. He's always supporting fantastic charities and nonprofit organizations. However, 
behind the scenes for him though he's actually supporting a lot of illegal trades you know nefarious deeds and he has found the witch blade the problem though is that the witch blade will not work for just anyone Instead, it will choose who will become the bearer of the Witchblade. The thing is, is if you have not been chosen and you put on the gauntlet, it will basically slice off your arm. Mr. Irons, on the other hand, regularly hosts these events where it's almost like the sword and the stone where everyone has to step up and see, you know, are you worthy of the Witchblade? And instead, most of them end up without a limb. Then you also have Mr. Nottingham. And Mr. Nottingham is basically the hired assassin, right-hand man of Mr. Irons. Except eventually we do learn that he's good but bad at the same time. He definitely broods, doesn't say very much, but is elusive enough that he's very intriguing to me as a character. So there's something about him beyond, yes, I love Robin Hood, stories period so the name nottingham definitely helps but that's one of the characters that i can't wait to read a little bit more about so we start our storyline and sarah is chosen by the witchblade won't say exactly how it happens but she gets chosen and she becomes the new bearer so mr irons wanting to control the power of the witchblade tries to seduce sarah and present himself as something so and that he's not which is a good guy and then you have Mr. Nottingham, who has been hired, definitely by Mr. Irons, to basically either steal the Witchblade or destroy Sarah so that way they can steal the Witchblade and the power of it. And this is where we have to start talking about the art. So here's my disclaimer with the art. I have no problems with there being violence, gore, sex, or nudity in whether it's a book or a film tv series for example bones if all you saw was the bones without seeing kind of the gory crime scene and the before image then you would be missing a very big element of that storyline you have to have some of these really grotesque bodies to then start piecing together the mystery braveheart on the other hand that torture scene at the end of the movie. We never needed to see what happened to his intestines to know what was going on. We got a little skit of what was about to happen, but all you saw was basically that zoom in on William Wallace or Mel Gibson's face, and you knew that this was not a comfortable position that he was in. We knew that this was still a very charged and emotional scene. So you don't always have to see everything to then get that same emotional response that was necessary at the end of the film. So you see what I mean? So the art is definitely very, very classic 90s. Yes, you do have our bodacious women, more curves, a bit more being revealed, but every character, like the guys all have their long hair back in a ponytail, low ponytail, of course, and everyone has hair in their face, little strands, of hair in their face and at one point Mr. Irons has a gold earring, fancy car, I mean a lot of the stylized choices are very clearly 90s. I mean Sarah's wearing some dresses like I said that were very typical 90s, mini skirts were very in, again it kind of fits. The problems that I started having was when the witch blade itself started to appear. So the witch blade of course is an armor piece that kind of fits on your hand and when it's not in use it disappears and kind of becomes one with you so when it appears you start with kind of the gauntlet all, all over your hand and it's this big huge bulky piece and it allows you to kind of shoot these really cool you know some sort of cool weaponry that kind of flares out from the witch blade but you also see this sort of armor that kind of protects you the problem that I have is that we all know with chainmail, chainmail tends to cover especially all of your vital organs. For Sarah especially, who's the only witch blade bearer at this particular point in the story, every time that she is wearing clothing and then she, you know, 
summons the Witchblade to protect her, amazingly, she ends up even more naked than when she started. And I'm like, what? How on earth is it possible that she loses layers of clothing instead of gains layers? So the Witchblade doesn't really protect vital organs. It doesn't really seem to do anything to kind of help really protect her. Instead, it just seems to constantly want to make sure that her curves are exposed and that you can see plenty of her cleavage and her navel and her thong, of course. And there's one just epic battle scene at the very beginning of the storyline where all three characters are kind of coming to a head. And finally, Mr. Irons has a admitted that he is evil and Sarah realizes that he's evil as well. Cool. And they, she ends up kind of on the rooftop. There's lightning. There's some seriously cool art going on. And she was originally wearing this beautiful dress, except as we know, dresses and kick butt action scenes do not always go together. So the skirt ends up being ripped. I'm like, that's fine. Very, very normal. And the thing that was really cool is at one point it ends up being almost like a spawn like cape and it starts like billowing in the wind with all this lightning and it's just so cool. Then we get to another panel and for some odd reason her skirt has just like flared straight up and now I am staring right at her butt and her thong. I'm like what? So okay I'm like maybe I can ignore this for one panel but there are several panels where I am staring straight at her butt and again, her skirt has been kicked straight upwards, and now the world is staring at her butt. And a part of me looked at it and thought about it, and I'm like, you know what, Spawn? Spawn's cape is constantly kind of moving to protect him, and it is seriously cool, and it looks amazing in the art. But I can tell you that as of right now, even with my extent of reading Spawn, I have not come across a single Spawn issue where Spawn's cape flare straight up and you see Spawn's butt. Like, amazing how that does not ever happen to him. So why the heck is this happening to her? The only other thing that I will say though, in all fairness, is that Angela within Spawn, I mean, you look at Spawn when he is fighting, he is fully covered and there are no, you know, pecs being exposed and six pack, no. He's just, he's in his costume. And then of course he's got the cool cape. Angela, on the other hand, is scantily clad. She's a warrior, yes, but she's scantily clad and bodacious. Again, it's a 90s comic, so it's a fair comparison. However, I will say when Angela was fighting, I never once was distracted by her curves or by her costume malfunctions. Instead, she was just fighting and scantily clad, or at least less clad than the men. That first fight sequence with Sarah, it was distracting. It was frustrating. It had no point in that particular scene. All it did was added a little extra TNA that she already had plenty going on with the rest and the slit with the skirt. Like, you didn't need to show her butt. So I was a little frustrated. I almost gave up on the book at that point. And I'm glad I didn't because instead I put it down for a little bit and then I came back. This love triangle with the two guys, Mr. Nottingham and Mr. Irons goes away or at least is put on the back burner. And then we start getting into the rest of the story and we find out that there are these murders, you know, that have been going on since the beginning. And it's almost like these people are, they're kneeling and they're staring straight up, but it's like they're being microwaved. And it's almost like their faces are frozen in a screen and they are being murdered. And the question is, who is killing these people? And we start focusing more on that side and her detective, Wiles. And then you see how the Witchblade can help her solve certain mysteries. So I'm like, okay, now we're talking. And the thing that really, really turned a corner for me with Sarah as a character. One of the subplots has a woman who is torturing little children. And at one point she starts kind of blaming bad husbands, bad situation on the actions that she's been taking. And finally Sarah's like, no, you know what? We all get dealt crappy hands. We are all forced to deal with people who are going to let us down. 
However, it's up to us to decide what we're going to do with that. And she's like, you were given a chance. You were given power and capability. And instead, you hurt little children. She's like, that is all on you. And she holds her accountable for it. And I loved that scene. I actually put it up on Instagram because it was this perfect little moment for Sarah as a character to just sit there and say, you know what? With power comes great responsibility. Yes. But it's also very true for women is we can blame and we can sit there and say, well, these circumstances, they just, I, they're out of my control. Or you can say, yeah, the circumstances were out of my control, but today's circumstances are not. And I'm going to make it different. So I loved that. So suddenly we're starting to see a little bit more of the capability of Sarah as a detective and as a woman. And then they added another twist to the hardcover. So there is a spin-off series within Witchblade called The Tales of the Witchblade. Now we find out within the Witchblade that it's been around for a very, very long time. And typically at this point in the storyline, I found out that the bearer almost always is a woman. So at one point I'm reading this Tales of the Witchblade and I see it's a pirate, a female pirate. I'm like, okay, is this like a reincarnation? What is it? Find out, no, it's Anne Bonny. The pirate that we've all just talked about very recently in Man Among Ye. So you find out that Anne Bonny was one of the bearers, find out that Joan of Arc was another bearer of the Witchblade, and you start seeing kind of more of the behind the scenes of this gauntlet. But then also what happens when some of these women are given the power? So you're getting a little bit more of the history, which is really, really cool. And it's just kind of adding another layer to the story, which I really, really liked. Towards the end of volume one, we do get to meet Darkness, who ends up getting his own series within Top Cow. I still haven't formed an opinion yet on Darkness. So far, I'm not his biggest fan, but I'm giving him a chance. So I guess at the end of the day, I'm interested in volume two. I will definitely be grabbing it and I'll be reading it. If you can get past that very first, you know, fight sequence, and you do have to kind of put blinders on with some of the ridiculousness of how naked she ends up when the Witchblade comes out. So right now I'm just kind of ignoring it because the characters and the storyline is so good. And I mean, it does end up looking very, very beautiful with, you know, how much they're able to show and not show. So there are some images even back here where I think it's gorgeous. But if you're looking at it just from a military standpoint of protection, there is no protection. If you're looking from an art standpoint, it's very beautifully done. All I can say is that there is a reason that is eventually given within the storyline. So it wasn't to the point that the explanation just forgave everything, but it, it answered the question and suddenly it made sense. Part of me does wish that they gave more of that in the beginning, because at this point, all we know is that the Witchblade talks to Sarah Pizzini. You hear kind of this voice in the back of her head. I do expect with time that she's going to start interacting with that voice and getting a bit more of a history and giving us more insight into it. We're just not there yet. So my question for you all is, do you have any kind of 90s comics that would fit into this category where yeah, there's a bit more nudity, there's a bit more bodaciousness, but either it's too distracting and you just couldn't get into it, or it wasn't too distracting and you enjoyed it. Red Sonia, Vampirella. Do you have those kind of characters that you were able to really kind of latch onto and enjoy, or was it just too much? I look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Please make sure to subscribe. and Have a great day, everyone.